Uh, North Carolina Republican Senator Tom Tillis with us right now. Senator, on these fast-moving developments, what do you think? Kyle uh, Franken stepping down, but not doing so for a few weeks. So what do you read into the few weeks thing? It uh, probably has to do with the votes that we'll have towards the year end, the continuing resolution and uh, the tax reform conference report, which I hope to send to the president's desk before Christmas. I, I can assume it's only that. Uh, but I think he made the right decision by stepping down, and I'm just right down from the chamber uh, as it's unfolding before us. You know, uh, both uh, my, my guest, uh, Jimmy Green and Lee Carter, coming from separate maybe world of politics here, said the message should be to a Roy Moore coming in, if that is the case, and he's elected, leave, go. Republicans shouldn't welcome him. What do you think of that? Well, you know, at this point, uh, most of us at the NRSC, including Mitch McConnell, have said that we thought he should step aside. He's decided to stay in the race. Now the voters of Alabama are going to make a choice next week. I, I still think that it needs to go. The, the, the facts need to be subjected to the uh, Senate ethics process. You mentioned in prior segments something that's very important. There's only so much jurisdiction we have over this. But I do believe that we need to look at the facts, and I still maintain the position. My preference would have been for Mr. Moore to step aside. There's a lot of good Alabamans that could represent them well in the U.S. Senate. It's just one thing that distracts us from all the very pressing matters that we want to get to and promises we want to fulfill. You know, the president has framed this, Senator, as you know, uh, with Senator Moore, or, or sen if he becomes Senator Moore, that, that the alternative is better than this Doug Jones as liberal. Uh, the, the president is cast as a liberal, uh, you know, Chuck Schumer, Nancy uh, Pelosi, acolyte, who would, who would be an anathema to everything the party stands for, uh, pitting the two in that way. What do you think of that? Well, you got to always worry when you kind of use a ends justify the means rationale for something that you really don't want to do. Um, so, yeah, again, I go back to the fact I, I, I know a lot of people in Alabama that would be great public servants that would not have this taint. This is about removing distractions so that we can get tax reform done, get infrastructure done, continue regulatory reform. Those are the things that the American people want to see. They do not want to see the embarrassing chapter that we're in right now. And anytime you have someone else come in that's going to keep that question going, it's at the expense of the important things that we need to get done. Those important things include, obviously, agreeing on a spending package or at least something that will last another couple of weeks separately, getting the tax cut thing done and ironed out the differences between your body and, of course, the House. How likely is it that, for example, on, on the budget, the temporary budget, um, that that could be, be done by tonight, tomorrow? Well, we'll have to see. I think I think that we'll probably have a short-term CR. I don't right. like it. I hate CRs in general. And then we'll come back before Christmas and have something longer term. We've got to work out some differences with the House. We've also got to work out a difference with um, the minority leader, Pelosi, who's threatening a shutdown over the DACA issue. And I think that she's making a bad She's making a terrible mistake. It's particularly a terrible mistake with respect to the DACA population. People like me are trying to come up with a reasonable bipartisan solution.